guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about Popple disease and this is actually a spin-off video from the malabsorption syndrome video. So let's get started. So what is Popple disease? Popple disease is a systemic disease caused by a gram-positive bacteria called Trophoderma wopelli. Although its most common manifestation is a malabsorption syndrome, because the mucosal lining of the small intestine is targeted and small lesions within the intestinal wall form, the disease also tends to affect the joints, the central nervous system, and the cardiovascular system. So in my picture on the left, you can see the microscopic image of Trophoderma wopelli, and on the right, you can see the destructive effect of the infection on the lining of the intestines. So what this bacteria actually does is, when it comes into contact with the human body, it tends to infiltrate in certain parts of the body and cause damage where it infiltrates. So most of the time, the small intestine is targeted in this disease and because it causes mucosal inflammation and lesions within the small intestine, the patient suffers from a malabsorption syndrome. So you can imagine if we have an active infection going on in the small intestine, the intestine is not going to be able to do its job in absorbing the nutrients from the food that we eat. So the first manifestation is usually signs of malabsorption syndrome with these patients. But this disease is special because the bacteria also tend to affect the joints, the central nervous system, and as well as the cardiovascular system. So what are the signs and symptoms of vocal disease? Gastrointestinal signs and symptoms are common in vocal disease and may include diarrhea, abdominal cramping and pain, which may worsen after meals, weight loss associated with the malabsorption of nutrients. In its more advanced form, malabsorption, insufficient absorption of nutrients from the diet, leads to wasting and the enlargement of lymph nodes in the abdomen. The malabsorption syndrome will manifest as anemia with weakness and fatigue due to inadequate absorption of vitamin B12, iron and folic acid, diarrhea with steaturia, which means excessive amount of fat in the stool, because if that fat is not being absorbed by the small intestine, there's nowhere to go but to enter the large colon and come out in the feces. So these patients will also have an increased amount of fat in their stool. Edema, which means fluid retention in the body's tissues due to decreased protein absorption. Because they're unable to absorb the proteins, they're going to suffer from hyperproteinemia, and hyperproteinemia will lead to different forms of edema. Malnutrition and weight loss due to decreased fat, carbohydrate, and protein absorption, and the weight may be 80 to 90 percent of the usual weight despite increased oral intake of nutrients. Muscle cramping due to decreased vitamin D, calcium, and potassium levels, and muscle wasting and atrophy due to decreased protein absorption and metabolism. So, these are all the gastrointestinal signs and symptoms. So, now let's talk about the other manifestations of the disease. Other frequent signs and symptoms associated with Whipple disease include inflamed joints, particularly the ankles, knees and the wrists, fatigue, weakness, anemia, fever, cough, enlarged lymph nodes, skin darkening called hyperpigmentation in areas that are exposed to the sun and in scars, chest pain and an enlarged spleen. Remember in the beginning we said that they will also have a central nervous system manifestation of the disease and these will cause neurological signs and symptoms which include a difficulty in walking, visual impairment including a lack of control of eye movements, confusion and memory loss. So something very interesting about Whipple's disease is that Whipple's disease is significantly more common in men with 87% of patients being male the disease is also common in farmers and those who are exposed to soil and animals, suggesting that the infection is acquired from these sources. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of Whipple disease. The diagnosis can be suggested based on the signs and symptoms, the main ones including diarrhea, steaturia, abdominal pain, weight loss, migratory arthropathy, fever and the neurological symptoms. Biopsy. The intestinal tissue is microscopically examined for the presence of disease-causing bacteria and their lesions, and specifically for the Trophoderma wopelli bacteria, which reveals past-positive macrophages in the lamina propria containing non-acid-fast gram-positive bacilli. So there's a specific stain that can be done to the biopsy, and it's called the PAS stain, 
and this stain will reveal to us a past positive result and that is a suggestive diagnostic for whipple disease. Blood tests such as a complete blood count can detect certain conditions associated with whipple disease particularly anemia and low concentrations of albumin. So remember albumin is a protein and because we have hyperproteinemia in these patients because their intestines are unable to absorb those proteins uh, we're going to have low levels of albumin. We'll also have some sort of an anemia because they won't be able to absorb the iron, the vitamin B12, and the folic acid. Treatment. Whipple disease therapy begins with two to four weeks of IV ceftriaxone or penicillin. Following that initial therapy, an oral course of sulfamethaxazole, trimetoprim, or SMZTMP uh, for one to two years will be prescribed. A shorter duration of antibiotic treatment may lead to a relapse. So as you can see by the treatment guidelines that this bacteria, once it infects the body, not only does it infiltrate many areas of the body, the patient will need to go on to a very long course of antibiotic therapy. So even though it is curable, it is a long journey to the eradication of the bacteria. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment and share. And if you would like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.